Owl, Stranger in the Forest. While all this was going on, Honey Bear had just decided that she really must stop eating and go for a walk, although only a short one. As she climbed down from the treehouse, a strange noise came to her ears. All the ducks and geese on the lake seemed to be quacking, cackling and screeching at once. What on earth could be the matter? Honey Bear hurried over there as quickly as she could. What a sight met her eyes. Over on the lake, Jeremph was floundering about in the icy water with all kinds of ducks and geese quacking and screeching around him. Hold on, Honey Bear shouted. I'm coming to help you. She tried to move across to Jeremph, but fell flat on her tummy and started to slither over the ice. It felt very cold, but she managed to slide along until she'd almost reached her friend. Stretch out your hand, she called. I can't, Jeremph shouted back. If I do, I will go underwater. No, you won't, Honey Bear said encouragingly. Come on. At that, Jeremph very gingerly let go his hold on the ice and stretched out a hand. Oh, what a comfort it was to feel Honey Bear grab hold of it. But try as she might, Honey Bear was not able to pull him out. Come on, you ducks and geese, she called. Stop making all that noise and give me a hand. As they gathered round, she told them to get into the water with Jeremph and help keep him afloat so it would be easier to pull him out. What a quacking, splashing, pulling, screeching and shoving there was, was Jeremph shouting loudly, mind what you're doing or we'll all go under in a minute. But at last, with the final heave and pull, Jeremph found himself out of the water, lying like a stranded fish on the ice. It was a great relief for Honey Bear to see her friend safe at last. Now we must hurry home as fast as possible, so you can get warm and dry, she said. Jeremph was shivering. His teeth were chattering so loudly that he could hardly thank the birds for all their help. Honey Bear told him he could do that later and pushed him along quickly until the tree house came into view. Soon, Jeremph was back home and giving himself a good rub down to dry his fur. Honey Bear began spooning up food as fast as she could. It had really been a very busy afternoon and she needed to keep her strength up. She also thought how awful it would have been if anything had happened to Jerem. Spring was on the way and he hadn't realized that the ice on the lake was getting thinner. Jeremph had begun to recover now. Stretching out his long arms, he thought about the forest and how much he liked living there. Then he found himself thinking of his old home at the zoo. He certainly preferred the forest and the freedom it gave him and, of course, his new friend Honey Bear. But he did miss his old friend the llamas, the giraffes, and even the noisy parrots. And as he was thinking this, he suddenly had an idea what fun it would be to introduce all his old friends to Honey Bear. Jeremph made the Jeremphing sound that had led to him being given his name. Yes, he said with a smile. What a wonderful adventure that would be. What do you say? asked Jeremph the following day, looking over at Honey Bear. Don't you think it would be exciting? 
The two were sitting in the tree house having breakfast. Well, yes, Honey Bear answered, rather uncertainly. Yes, I suppose so. You don't sound very keen. Jeremph gave a rather mournful look. If we go on a trip to the zoo, you can meet all my friends there. I know, said Honey Bear, putting a handful of berries into her mouth. It's just that I've never left the forest before and I don't know what to expect. It'll be fun, I promise you, said Jerem. Let's start making plans today. And with that, he climbed down from the treehouse and hurried off. A little later that morning, Honey Bear stretched and climbed down from the treehouse, only to find Jerem sitting rather glumly on a log. What's the matter? Honey Bear said. Why the long face? The young gorilla looked up and made his Jerem sound. We have a problem, he said. I've been speaking to some of the animals, but no one knows the way to the zoo. Can't you remember anything about your journey here? No, not a thing. I just remember leaving the zoo and then being lost. Who have you asked? said Honey Bear. Well, Jerem scratched his head. I spoke to the squirrels next door. Arlie the badger, some of the deer, potting the pine marten, and even Castor the beaver. And none of them could help. Jerem shook his head, giving a heavy sigh. None of them had any idea where the zoo might be. He raised his sad brown eyes. If we can't find out how to get there, we can't even begin our journey. For all we know, we could be going in the wrong direction from the start. Honey Bear thought for a while. I don't know what to suggest, she said at last. But if I'm going to think about this properly, I'd better have a snack. And leaving Jerem sitting on the log, she went up into the treehouse and returned a few minutes later with a bag full of nuts. She offered some to Jerem, and he put out his large hairy hand. The trouble is, said Honey Bear, taking nuts for herself and putting them into her mouth. Most of the animals are like me. They won't know the way to the zoo because they've never left the forest. So what we need to think about is who we know who has left the forest. She placed several more nuts in her mouth and chewed thoughtfully. That's what we need to be thinking. But that's brilliant, Jerem said smacking his head and jumping up quickly from the log. I know the answer I know who we should ask. He waved his arms in the air making flapping motions. The birds, that's who. They're the ones who can go long distances. We need to ask the birds. Startled by her friend's sudden movements, Honey Bear had let a few nuts fall to the ground. What an excellent idea, she said, bending down and carefully picking up the dropped nuts. And I think I know just who we should speak to. Who? said Jerem, eyes wide with excitement. Let's ask Kato the Owl, Honey Bear replied. If anyone knows, he will. Jerem had wanted to go and find Kato straight away, but Honey Bear told him there was something she had to do first. What's that? asked Jerem. Well, two things really, 
said Honey Bear. I was thinking of having a short snooze, and then I was going to visit the old tree, the one that was hit by lightning. Why on earth would you want to do that? said Jerome. The other day I found some excellent shoots growing there, Honey Bear said. They were really sweet and juicy, and I thought I'd go back and collect some. And this is more important than finding out how we get to the zoo. Jerome gave Honey Bear one of his most mournful looks. It's just that they were so good, Honey Bear said. A lot of the animals have been eating them and I'm sure they'll be gone soon. Do all bears think about food all the time, or is it just you? Jerome said and was about to add something else, but contented himself with a shake of the head and a series of discontented Jerems. Honey Bear could see the gorilla was unhappy and, not wanting to hurt his feelings, tried to come up with a compromise. How about if I skip the snooze and you come with me to help collect the shoots? Then we can go on from there to find Kato. Jerem took a moment to think about this. Well, all right, he said at last, but only if we can go now. The two friends followed a narrow trail through the forest until they came to the tree which had been struck by lightning. It lay bent over with the outside bark blackened and split, but all around green shoots were sprouting up from the ground. See what I mean, said Honey Bear, pointing at the shoots. Don't they look delicious? Jerome had to agree they did. He brought along a sack and immediately started collecting the shoots and placing them in it. Honey Bear did the same, although it seemed to Jerome that she ate almost as many as she put in the sack. When it was full, Jerome tied a knot in the top and slung it over his shoulder. Come along, let's go and find Kato, he said, and set off, hurrying ahead through the trees. Hold on, Honey Bear cried out. Don't go so fast. Come on, slow coach, Jerem called back. The sooner we can speak to him, the sooner we'll be able to find out whether he knows the way.